In this tutorial, we're going to be making very, very easy baby boots to do, and this will be the, the Christmas, and I'm going to be doing mine in green this time, and they will be my elf booties. Now, you should know that I used two different yarns when I did this at the same time. I just mixed them, and when I did that, I used a size K hook. In the tutorial that you're about to see now, I'm using a size G, and I'm only using one string instead of two. And the reason for it is just I, I find people get confused uh, when they're doing uh, two strings at one time. So basically what we're going to be doing, this is actually just one panel and we're just going to be folding it in half and securing it shut. And you can see that there's a bit of a gap on the top so that you can slide the, the child's foot in. And this is a bit bigger than uh, what you're used to with the other one. And a lot of parents find that these little booties don't last very long so they prefer to do a little bit bigger and have some fun with it. So let's get on with your Christmas boots. To start, I'm using a 4-ply Bernat uh, worsted yarn today, and we're just going to start off with our slip knot around your finger twice, back over the forward, back, and push up. So let's chain 35 all together. So this is already 1, so this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Now before you get all excited, you're like, oh my god, that is not like the size of a baby booty. Think about this as if it was a horseshoe. And so basically this is a pattern that we're going to be folding in afterwards. So if you look at it in comparison to the size boot, you'll know that it's actually a, a portion of it because this is a pattern that's been folded in half. So 35 is your magic number and let's get on with your next tutorial. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to single crochet ourselves across this line. So let's just chain up one, okay, and going into the next stitch available through and pull through. Okay, so just keep going. Just go in, grab your material, pulling it through two. And just keep going like that all the way across the line. Make sure that when you go in, you are having two strings on top, one on the bottom. It provides stability and strength. And uh, What we're going to be doing with this particular pattern once we get to the next level is that we're not going to be doing a conventional crochet like we have been all along. What we're going to do is just change it to a single double configuration and the, the reason for that is that we want to uh, ensure that it doesn't look like regular crochet A lot of people like homemade stuff, but they don't like it to the point where it's too homemade, if that makes any sense. Basically, you're looking for a cute wow factor without looking too homemade and rushed, and a sense of pride at the end. So we've just single crocheted in all of the 35. So that's what it will look like at this point. 
So you're thinking pretty well, it's pretty long. Remember, we're going to fold it in half. So that's as long as it's going to be. So it's not very long. So what I said, we're going to do a single double configuration. So we're just going to chain up three. So let's go chain one, two, and three. And that counts as a double crochet. So that's part of your first stitch, as you can see. So now we want to single crochet into the next one right there. So we're going to go single, double, single. So that was single. So next one, we're just going to grab our material and go double crochet in. And basically, this makes the pattern look like it's zigzagging a bit and gets rid of the pesky little train tracks that crochet always offers. So it was double, single. Now you will notice that uh, when I held uh, up, I don't know if you really paid attention, is that when I held it and showed it in this folded in half in front of the, the red Santa boot, you would have noticed that this pattern is actually smaller. And the reason for it is not necessarily the count. The counts are exactly identical. What's different is that the size hook that I used in the, the red one and behind is bigger, so you'll get a bigger boot. Also, too, is that there's two materials uh, being used together. So which creates a thicker material, which creates a bigger boot again. So not only the wool is changing uh, sizes, but the actual needle as well. So if this is not big enough for you, you're more than welcome to um, change up your size hooks. You can also, um, like you can actually, what you can do is, because it's folded in half, if you take a child's foot and you have that measurement, you can do exactly what I'm doing right now. Oops. And I got talking to you, and that was it. So you can do exactly what I'm doing right now. You just, uh, we're, it's going to be folded in half anyway. So you can just go, um, just measure around the child's foot to get the outside perimeter, and just go the length of what that takes. And then at the end, we're just going to sew it all together anyway. We're just going to fold it and sew it shut. Now, I've already filmed this tutorial today, this entire tutorial, and uh, the reason for the retake is that I got chit-chatting about life during the middle of it, and I lost count, and I ended up with a booty that was so out of whack, so I'm trying to concentrate right now, just not looking at the computer, and just uh, concentrating on this pattern. So single-double, single-double configuration right to the end. And don't forget to go right to the end. A lot of people tend to to sell it short. So there's still one more to go. So that we ended up with a double. Now if you ended up with a signal that's not a big deal. We can just we just have to go opposite it to each other. So you can see that it doesn't look like conventional crochet at this point. So when you go to fold it in half now you can see that it looks different. So we're working on, not only are we working on the height of the boot at this moment, but we're also working on the bottom of it as well. So let's move along to your next row. Now I told you that we ended up with the double, so that means that we want to make whatever's on top to be opposite of each other. So we ended up in a double, so the first one will be a single, so we're just going to chain up one only. Now if you ended up with a single, you're going to chain up three, and then just put, so if you ended up with single, you're going to put a chain up three, which equals a double, and the next one will be single. In my case, we ended up with a double, so we're just going to chain one for a single, and then start into the next stitch as a double. Now you can actually uh, tell by looking at this pattern what you need to put into the stitches. And you'll notice, see how that's kind of bulging out a bit, just like there? Well, that's, a, that's actually a double that's being compressed by the pull down of the two singles on both sides. So I know that that is a single, that's a double because it looks squatted and that's a single. So I want to put the opposite. So this, if this is uh, pulling that down, that must be a single. Therefore, this is a double that goes in over top of it. And that's squatted, so it must be a single. 
that's going over top and then vice versa. And uh, that took me a while to get used to looking at the pattern that way. Uh, but that's my tip for you today at no charge. So I had a neighbor donate me a whack of clothing. And uh, she had her baby and she's probably going to have another one whenever and uh, so she wants all of her clothing back but I'm using the baby's clothing to and uh, to help guide me on different sizes you know a lot of people have great resources on what head measurements should be and and uh, whatever all hypothetical stuff on the internet but it is so much easier to actually have real life stuff in front of you and uh, I was able to determine how to get like this is the loom knit a Santa hat so you can loom knit something like that again a tutorial is available like that on my website or on YouTube in my channel so if you want to make some matching hat for that and again it's very simple and I just used um, her daughter's uh, baby clothing to get the size to do that and to figure out what all the calculations are some of this stuff is actually very is just all about mathematic mathematics and what goes together and what doesn't and I'm not successful in everything. Some things are just uh, too complex for me either to do or it's too uh, complex to try to teach it. So we're actually almost at the end of the line. Now this, you got to remember that this is not the entire height of your, your boot. Okay, so you got one more to go. And so that was so the last one was a single. So just going into the stitch itself, not to the gap. Okay, so that was a single. So this is not the entire height of the actual boot. Okay, because it still has to do the bottom section of fold before it folds up, because the actual half point, waypoint is right in the center. So it has to work its way to the edge before it does fold up. So don't get uh, confused by that being the height. So let's move on to your next line. So we finished off with the singles, so I'm going to start off with the doubles. So we're just going to chain up three to equal your, your double, and then the next one will be single. And if you had the other way around, then just do the other way around, just like I explained already in the last uh, bit, uh, section there. So just single double all the way across again. This is the last time you'll be going across uh, all the way. We're going to be moving along and starting to do the formation of the actual uh, ankle boot area of this pattern. Okay, we're finishing off with the double. Okay, so there you go. So there it is there. And now we're going to start to do the formation of the actual um, boot. So just so we're going to turn it one more time. And we're just going to do, so that was a, 
double at the end, so we're just going to chain up one for a single and then just work our way back across single double. Now I actually had to do a revision uh, to this just minutes ago, well seconds ago actually. I'm looking at it and I'm like this cannot do the fold and the reason for that is that because that I'm only using one material instead of two like you see in the the red Santa boot is that it's not going to be um, it's not going to be uh, high enough for a child's foot to fit in so I have to watch for the level that is here and uh, by the time this folds underneath and back over the top it's going to be too thin So I guess if uh, if you were doing the Santa boot as is with the two material, you would have finished off in the last round before making up the heel area. And uh, I'm probably going to have to make a note of that somewhere on my website. It's so whether anybody's actually going to use the two yarns together anyway. I just did it for the cute effect of it. and. Uh, I am working for the Creative Festival in October of 2010, so these are all going to be show samples of what is available for free on my website and on YouTube here. The whole point of the Creative Festival for me, there's crap on my yarn, but the whole point of the Creative Festival for me is just to encourage crochet and the excitement of it and what you can actually do and what's actually doable. I know there's a lot. And I do specialize with a lot of people that are learning crochet for the very first time. So I try not to do anything too complex. And uh, there's some people that have just started with me that didn't know nothing. And now they're, they're at levels that are just absolutely incredible. So it doesn't take long. It's just a matter of desire. Okay, so there you go. So now what we're going to do is now form the boot area. Now in order to do this area up here, we have to then get from the end of the boot, because if we fold it in half, we're at the end point of the boot. Okay, so we have to get to there. So in order to get there, we have to what's called slip stitching. And all we need to do is just slip our needle into the very first stitch that's available, grab it, and pull it through and through. Okay, going into the next one. So that was one grabbing it and pulling it through and through. And we want to do that eight times. That was two. Great. Pulling it through, through, and through. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now looking at it, based on what I told you before, the next one is a... Uh, um, it is a double crochet there that's sitting. You can see that it's being pushed down by the other two on both sides. Sorry about that. And uh, what we're going to just do now is that we're just going to um, go over it with a single crochet. So going in, over, and now let's begin our single double series again. And we're going to do our single doubles all the way until we get to eight stitches before the end of this line because basically we're creating a mirror image of this booty so it can be folded in half. It's one of the easiest ways to make little baby booties. And we don't worry about it if it's left or right. So let's look at it, and we just have to see our stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I got 5 more to go. So let's count that down. So 1, 2, 3. Four and five. So we just happen to finish with the double. So let's now fold it in half, and you want to make sure where you've slip stitched over here, 
that it matches to where you're going to do over here. So you can see that's really starting to put together and you can see that the top of the booty is now starting to form. So let's uh, move on along to your next area. Okay, so we finished with the double, so we're just going to chain up one for a single and now going into the next one for a double. So if you had the opposite, just do the opposite of that. So this is the last time we'll be working with the green on this particular uh, tutorial and we're going to be switching over. Now normally I would switch to a fuzzy uh, eyelash yarn mixed with a regular yarn to give it a volume, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I did that in the last tutorial that I recorded earlier today and it's just too much um, to look at. It's too hard for a tutorial to be done. So I'm only going across as far as um, where I started slip stitching before. If you need to count um, then do so but it should be pretty obvious um, where you started. Also, it's very difficult to get your needle into a slip stitched stitch. Um, it's, it's tighter, it's much tighter. So that should be your first clue that you've gone far enough. So just maintaining your single double, single double. Okay, and this is where the last one available and this will be a double. And at this point we want to cast off, so finish off and I just always trim over my hand like that. So let's pull the needle out, pulling it tight. And this is called weaving, sticking your needle into the top edge, grabbing the material, pulling it through, and using your fingers to pull it through, point over, and just continue to work your way along that line. And uh, And when you get to think about an inch, two inches, maybe max, you know, and then stretch it, give it a good stretch, and then trim. And you can always finish that later. So this is what your boot looks like now. And don't worry about the straggler here yet. We'll be dealing with that in a bit. And now let's add the white on. And you can see the shape is now starting to take effect. So let's add the white to where we just finished off there. So let's go on with your next video. To start your white, we're just going to wrap it around your finger as to doing your slip knot, as like we always do. Do that, get your hook, put it on, pulling it snug. And where we finished off, so we're just going to slip it into where we finished. Okay, grabbing it. So let's grab the material, pull it through that and through the, the white loop. Okay, so now it's on. Now we finished off with the double, if you remember, so we're just going to chain up one for a single and then going into the next one for a double. So we're just going to maintain that configuration. Now let's hide your straggler at the same time, you might as well. And so when we go into the stitch, just keep your straggler on top of the line and you see how that's grabbing it? Well, your straggler is just getting stuck in between the string, which is what you're looking for, right? So you just keep going, and if you think your straggler is long enough, and uh, then you can trim it at any time. I would think that would be long enough at this point. So now you can really start to see that uh, the the single doubles, what it actually looks like when you change in color. You can see that one is lower than the other. And that's what gets rid of the train tracks, everybody. Gonna pull that out. Kind of made a mistake there. That one should be, this one here should be a single. And then double. And I could tell that because this one is squatted, therefore it should be a single on top of it. And the next one is not squatted. We're going to go right to the edge. Okay, and going right into the last one for a double. And we are almost done, everybody. So there's what it looks like so far. Okay, so we're just going to rotate it 
and now this is your last one. So our last one was a double, so we're just going to chain up one because it should be single over there, and the next one will be a double going in. So this is our last line. So let's continue to do our single double. Now when you're using the eyelash yarn, you'll never be able to tell that you're singling or doubling. So if you are using eyelash yarn and you just want to double crochet yourselves, um, silly, then go ahead and do that. You won't be able to tell. But uh, with this kind of yarn, with this material that I'm using right now, it's, it's really clearly obvious. It's just a great way of breaking up the, the traditional look of crochet all the time. So when we get to the end, we're going to be casting off. And then double crochet at the end. So let's cast off your white at this point. Just trimming over your hand. Okay, pulling it through and again just weaving that into an edge to the edging. And if you feel you want to tie it because you know a child's being wearing it, then that's your business to do that. Um, these are all just tutorial samples, so I know that a child will never be wearing them. Um, but maybe a tie would be good. Um, you have to decide what's right for you. And again, keep weaving until you think that it's long enough and then trim it. So let's begin now to uh, sew this boot together and you decide which one, if you like one side versus the other, if you want this side to be your inside or the outside then what you want to do is you want to fold it in like that and uh, whatever side that this is now when you fold it what you're looking at is actually the inside of the boot so if one side looks better than the other then you have to decide it right now and um, let's begin to sew this bad boy together. What we're going to just do is grab your material, do a slip knot, and slip on your hook. And now let's start off at the heel of your boot and try to get it so that it's matched each other. Okay, so that all the material is matching. So I always, we always work from, if you're right or left handed, um, you work from what side's comfortable for you. So just go into the very edge pieces. Okay, so on one side or the other. And we're basically being like a human sewing machine at this point, and we want to sew everything shut. So using the crochet method as if you're doing granny squares, just grabbing the material and kind of working your way through it. So move on to the next stitch, next stitch on the other side. Put your straggler, you might as well put your straggler in a position so you can lock it down so the kid's toes don't catch on it. Remember, you are working on the inside of the boot right now. What you're seeing is the inside. Okay, move into your next and next. We are just sealing this bad boy shut. Next and next. So it's a good idea when you are working on this project to just double check um, before you got to this point whether it was going to be folded in half equally. And if you have one side longer than the other, it's going to be a problem for you. So I've got enough straggler in there. I'm going to let it just ride up like that, and I'm going to trim it after. So just in and in. And you want to be a little cautious about where you're sticking the needle in. If, you're, if you get too crazy with it, you can actually see huge gaps of, of, of uh, empty space when you go to turn this inside out. So you just want to be gentle with this. Be mindful to be consistent. Consistency is a good word. We're coming to the edge. And when we get to the corner point that I'm about to do now, let's put in three in the same hole. And this allows this material to kind of make a turn. Okay, so let's do the front of the boot. And again, there's the straggler. So let's do the front. We'll leave the straggler on the top section so we can trap that into position so you, the kid's feet won't catch on it. And when we feel comfortable enough, we'll just trim it.
Okay, we're about to turn another corner, so then let's put three in that one again. And that just gives the material an opportunity to turn without really pulling at it. Okay, and now let's work our way across the top of the boot. And again, we just want to match. Now you'll notice the top of the boot is actually real stitches um, that we've been using, so might as well grab both um, on both sides of it. So in this side, so you'll have two on there and two on there. Now, I see, see there, I didn't go into the right stitch area. Again, if you're not careful, you really will put holes into your work um, through the stitching. It's like an out-of-control sewing machine, really. So you want to be mindful that you're being precise, but not to the point where you're, you can't do nothing. Some people are over-perfectionist, and they, they, str they struggle too hard to get it perfect. And you'll never get it perfect, but you want to get it kind of close. So you don't want to go all the way up to the white because you'll be able to see that. So what you want to do is just go into the green okay, and just grab it into the first white section and stop. So first white, first white, and stop. And now what we want to do is just pull through. You want to trim over your hand. We're going to cast off. Okay, And now we're just going to pull through. And if you want to tie a, a knot at this point, you can. And then what you want to do is just weave into where you just came from. And this is really easy to weave into. The stitches are very obviously in front of you. So go as long as you think you need to go. So there, there you go. So there's the inside of your boot. Let's trim off any of the, the extra pieces that we have that we know that we have secured in the position while we've been working away. And now let's turn your boot inside right out. Well, let's turn it. It's inside out right now, so let's turn it around. Be a little gentle. Um, this is kind of a tight fix. Okay, we've got a straggler hanging out there, so we'll fix that. So, fix that. Pull it up. And voila, you just gotta, we just gotta fix a couple stragglers in here. And uh, voila, we've been one, two. And voila, you have your first elf booty. So you can see if you would have decorated that with uh, eyelash yarn and used maybe a little more fancier yarn here, it would have been a lot more cooler, but uh, that is the basic principle for getting your little elf in Santa boots. So enjoy.